Well, it's the following morning, and we've come down to check the beer. Hmm. I think as a home brewer, you always have that very brief panic when you don't see the fermentation happening. You think, oh, have I done something wrong? So, it really, because we were brewing quite late last night, it has only been in there for maybe seven hours or so. And on the packet instructions it says you may not expect to see fermentation for between 5 and 15. So, I've not lost all hope yet. Uh, hopefully when I come back from work later on today, uh, we'll see some effervescence on the go. The moment of truth. So, I'm back from work. Let's check. Oh, that's more like it. We're on day three of the fermentation now, and I'm going to go in and check the specific gravity of it. So if we open up and have a quick peek inside. Right, so as you can see, that brown mark along the edge there is actually the mark of what we call high Krausen. Uh, Krausen is a German word that means to gather up or to be wrinkled, and it just refers to the rocky head that beer throws when it's fermenting. And you can see that's past, which means it's risen up, fallen back down, which means we're heading towards the end of the fermentation. Now the device I'm going to use to measure the specific gravity is called a hydrometer. Now this is just a homebrew hydrometer, so it's not particularly accurate, but it does the job. What a hydrometer is, it's more or less a glass fishing float, and it will float at a different height inside the liquid, depending on how much sugar is dissolved in it. For the purpose of checking the specific gravity periodically, it will hopefully give me an idea of when the fermentation has started and as it progresses I should be able to see the level of the hydrometer will drop closer and closer down to zero or 1.000. Uh, 1.000 incidentally is more or less what distilled water would be so that's something a solution with no sugar dissolved in it at all. A typical specific gravity starting for a beer of 5% or so is going to be something like 1.050 um, so my beer is hopefully going to be slightly stronger than that, about 5.5%. The original gravity was 1.056, I think. It being a dark beer, though, it may well not drop all the way down to uh, nothing, and beers rarely do. It will drop down, I think, maybe to 1.020, and for the purposes of this, I'm just going to call that 20. So in homebrew terms and in commercial brewing terms, people just call that gravity units. They, they drop the 1.0 something. I just call it 20 or 56 and it makes the maths much easier too. So in a commercial setting it's very important to be very accurate with your readings when you're checking the alcohol level because this is how much tax you'll have to pay at the end of the day. In a homebrew setting it doesn't really matter so I can use a fairly inaccurate one. Uh, commercially you'll get hydrometers that read a tenth of this scale. You'll get one that will read between 10 and 20 on that scale and it will be three times larger than this and then you'll get one that will read between 20 and 30 and, and so on, and sometimes they overlap to make it a little bit easier. Right then. It looks like the beer is at about 32 maybe. Something like that, and bear in mind this came down from 56, so it's probably getting towards finishing, actually. Yeah, it's probably got another 10, 10 or 15 points to go. So I'll go in for a taste test. Mmm. So that cherry wood smoke flavour is definitely in there, that's coming through. It's still got quite a lot of residual sweetness, as you'd expect. I must say, I'm not getting a great deal of spruce yet, and it's interesting because last year I didn't get spruce until right towards the very end, once all of the more in-your-face flavours had mellowed out, so we'll just have to see how that progresses. So we are four days into fermentation, and it's time to put some dry hops into uh, one of the batches. Oops. <clears throat> so I keep all of my hops inside the freezer, because the main enemies of hops are oxygen, so you can see they're vacuum packed, temperature, 
uh, and time. All of these things can oxidize hops and you really want to have them as fresh as you can. So we've got Apollo, I believe is an American hop, uh, quite a high alpha. Not usually a dry hop actually. People normally use this as a bittering hop. But I've used it before with spruce beer and because it has a fairly resiny, piney flavor, it complements it quite well. So I'm gonna use, I think, 30 grams into a 10 litre batch, which is the equivalent of putting 60 into 20 litres. I think I put 50 in last time, but because I'm putting it into the sterilised muslin bag, I'm sure the utilisation will be slightly lower than I expect, so I'll add that extra 5 grams just to be sure. So the reason I'm putting these in 4 days into fermentation and not at the beginning or closer to the end is because yeast activity actually can uh, inhibit the sort of hop aromas. It can clump together with the hop oils and sink to the bottom and trap it uh, in the trub that you'd have left behind. So. In we go, and I can leave the string hanging over the side. All right, dry hops in. So I'm keeping this one as a dry hop experiment, and just so I know uh, what sort of effect the dry hops have, and what comes from the hop and what comes from the spruce, I have my control test right there. Day five, and it looks like we're down to about 16 there, which is a bit lower than I expected. Well, it's still going. So it looks like we're now uh, approaching 14, maybe 13, maybe even 12. Hmm. I've been taking hydrometer readings now for seven days, and most homebrew books normally just tell you to wait for seven days and then take one. And while there is no real necessity to take regular readings like this, it does now give me an idea of how the yeast behaves. So if I was to use this yeast again, then I know that it finishes around this sort of stage, or I know it takes this long. So if you look at the previous batch here, uh, split over two different yeasts, they were at two wildly different points, so I, I knew just by, by my experimentation uh, where they ended up. And so, once each bottle is rinsed and inspected, it goes straight into some sterilising solution. Hmm. Oh, There we go, that's one 10 litre batch's worth of bottles washed, checked, sterilised, rinsed, checked, put on a towel. Should never have taken this marigold off. There we go, <laughs> all for that. So I've sterilised everything that I need. So that includes my uh, piece of hose, um, my little bottle stick over there, which is just, just a tiny version of a racking cane. I'll give this a rinse. Bob is your uncle. Attaches like so. Right, now the fun part. He says. So this is the dry hot batch, this one. Oh god. Um. And there we go. That's the first batch bottled. And in there you can see the yeast sediment at the bottom, where the yeast has multiplied, risen up, fermented through the beer, and sunk to the bottom. Right, so it's time for the all-important carbonation check. Um, what I'm expecting here 
is hopefully for this bottle to open with a pop. So it's been in the bottle for a few days. This is just a quality control uh, measure for me. So in this case, as, as every brewer probably knows, you will occasionally slip up and end up with something overpressurized. And this is the way that I'm going to tell if these are going to turn into grenades and explode all over the kitchen or whether or not they're going to be perfectly fine and age nicely in the bottle. So, ah, not a massive pop, but you did hear it. It was there. We'll see how it looks. What I'll do, I'll do a proper review of the taste and how it compares to what I was aiming for. Uh, and that'll probably be up in the next few weeks. So, thanks for watching.